Right. We have the screen. Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues. On behalf of the organizers, I'm terribly sorry for the heat. And we will have a heated debate here because we have a most interesting topic. We're not going to go beyond the time limit. My name is Sokolov Denis. I'm uh, head of the research for Eastern Europe with Cushion Weyfeld. And we have a brilliant set of speakers. We're going to discuss housing with a lot has been mentioned regarding rented and owned housing, about the new challenges for the cities. Our topic is uh, this, rented, smart and shared models for the future housing. During the previous sessions, there, were, there, were, there emerged a new term. Before they said affordable housing, now they came up with the so-called sexy housing. I would like to introduce our speakers. These are the following. Darinka Zichke, Assistant Professor, TU Delft, Expert in Collaborative Housing, former Director of Building Social Housing Foundation. Alexey Sherestov, Development Director of DOM.RF. Uh, Dmitry Tsvetov, Director for Marketing and Product Development, GCA 101. Piotr Shura, Developer, Founder, Posh. And Marko Mihic Yevtic, Head of Product, PIK, Pig Group. I would like to uh, address you and the, the Rinka. Please share with us the trends on the housing market. Moscow has made some great steps forward in solving the problems faced by the city some seven years ago. It was clear from Sergei Sobyanin's talk at the plenary session that it's us who form the agenda and the context. But still, in terms of housing, especially in terms of rented housing, Moscow still has a lot of way to go. Darinka, the floor is yours now, please. Please put up the presentation. Here you have the clicker. Can you hear me? Is it clear? Yes? Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, inviting me to this fantastic event. I'm really excited to be here at the forum and also in Moscow, in Russia. It's my first time. So I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, well, I come from Delft, from the Netherlands. I am not Dutch myself, but I am an assistant professor there at the Faculty of Architecture and the Built Environment at the Delft Techno uh, University of Technology for three years now. And what I study there is something that we have begun to call collaborative housing. Collaborative housing is not one type of housing. It's a, a, an umbrella term, as we call it, a, a generic term that encompasses a wide variety of collectively self-organized and self-managed housing. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what collaborative housing is and why I am very interested in studying this. Let's start by having a look at the figures, at the problems. If only we look at Europe, not even looking at other, other countries, we see that we have decade after decade for the last uh, 30, 40 years, an increasing uh, set of indicators that show us that housing exclusion, that means people living in inadequate, unaffordable housing conditions are, uh, is increasing. I'm, I'm going to talk mainly about the European area um, because this is where I've developed this work. But of course, many of these trends, these problems, also affect large parts of the world, and most notably, mega cities, big cities where people flock because there are opportunities for them. So uh, these, are, these were figures produced by the FEANSA, is one uh, European federation looking at homelessness, and they, they are pretty striking, the number of people facing different problems in the housing market. So what is going on? If we really look at um, long-standing trends in the housing markets, we see that there are deep transformations in the way housing is being provided. 
It's been increasingly privatized and market-oriented, so government policies are emphasizing the importance of home ownership, so people owning their own housing more and more. They are supporting um, and actually subsidizing um, mortgage uh, lenders and mortgage takers for this purpose. And at the same time, there is an increasing retreat from the state um, supporting subsidized housing. So social housing or subsidized housing is becoming more and more for the very poor. So that is leaving a gap, an increasing gap for middle income people or people who don't have the conditions such as permanent employment to access the market. And at the same time, they cannot access subsidized housing because they are not poor enough. This seems like a paradox. And we also see a trend towards commodification of housing. That means housing has increasingly lost its value as a shelter, as a home for people. It's becoming more and more a tradable com uh, commodity in the market. So these are uh, widely documented trends. I'm just going to mention them to set the, the context. Um, and we see more and more households are becoming excluded from housing. At the same time, we're looking at key demographic trends. So globally, the United Nations has produced some data that shows us the increasing number of elderly people that we're going to have to support in the future decades. And we see also a more diverse picture in terms of the types of families. In the past, the producers of housing were producing housing for the nuclear family, so a mom and a dad and the kids. Today, we have many more types of households. So the housing market needs to adjust to that diversity. Are we prepared for that? Is our housing stock and the way we live prepared to match this changing society? And we see also there are some very important threats to the quality of life in the housing situation in worldwide. We have increasing social inequality and segregation in our cities, especially in large cities. We have the privatization of the city, so less and less public areas are accessible to everyone. So we have gated communities, for instance. And the reality of climate change. We need to adopt more sustainable ways of producing and consuming housing. So, what can we do about it? And this is where collaborative housing comes in. We see the rising phenomena of people working together, so co-working, going either to a rented space or even home working. The office has become a new term, a new hip term, where people meet to work together in somebody's home. We also see the rise in co-living. Co-living many of you might have heard, is now becoming a market product in many big cities where entrepreneurs are investing in shared housing for strangers. So basically, you get your studio flat, you pay a not so affordable rent, although it's marketed as affordable, that's debatable, and then you share certain amenities. And all of this is part of wider trends of urban commoning. That means looking at the city assets as something that we can share if we act responsibly. The sharing economy. I'm talking here about the real sharing economy, the peer-to-peer -peer sharing, sharing economy, where the people who actually deliver the service are the ones who also get something in return, not only the commercialized sharing economy of Uber and Airbnb, for example. So this is where collaborative housing comes in. And actually, collaborative housing is nothing new. We can see that throughout history, this is just a schematic timeline. We've had it for over a century. Housing cooperatives in many parts of the world started after the Industrial Revolution as a way for people to help each other to have good housing conditions. And then we see very quickly, we don't have time to go in depth into every type, but we see across history, different parts of the global north, particularly, we see different models of people coming together to provide housing for themselves, with each other, and by themselves. And 
what is interesting to see is that more recently, because these new forms of housing has, have become more widespread, at least in the global north, some established housing providers, for example, housing associations, municipal housing companies, are starting to work together with groups of residents who want to live collaboratively and also build collaboratively. So we see some international examples that I'm busy uh, doing research on, such as the collective uh, example in Sweden that dates back to the 1980s or even earlier. Von Cooperatz is a new model for resident-led cooperatives in the Netherlands. Habitat Participative in France, a, a real social movement that has involved even changes in the law to allow these uh, col collaborative housing initiatives to flourish and the famous Baugruppen uh, that come from Germany. But what's interesting is that in Austria, which is a country with a very sound uh, housing association sector, these professional companies are teaming up with residents to do things collaboratively. And what is important is to understand that the big challenge here is for professionals. Housing professionals, bankers, mortgage lenders, Planners need to change their mindset in order to work with organized citizens. They need to start thinking, shifting their thinking from public participation of residents to co-production. Co-production is a new paradigm that sees the end user, the resident in this case, as equal in terms of expertise, knowledge and aspirations. So, of course, this requires a big change in the way we educate our future professionals. I don't know, how much time do I have left? Minutes. One minute. Just quickly to run you through some pictures of uh, how, how this looks like in different parts of Europe. In Zurich, many of you might have heard a very, very interesting example of a large-scale neighborhood, really, made out of different cooperatives building collaboratively their different buildings and having common spaces in between. Here we have a female-led uh, co-housing example in the city of Vienna, where the women are in the driving seat. Here in France, we have a very energy-efficient and participatory and inclusive uh, co-housing in cooperation with a social housing association. They won an award for the very high environmental sustainability of their building. Last but not least, we have a second half of life housing in Sweden. That means housing where people already in their 40s start to think how they would like to live when they grow old. So they come together in groups and they start thinking about a housing that has different uh, spaces to do things together. And this last one, L'Espoir, is in Brussels. And here, a group of low-income immigrants came together with a bank, architects, and an NGO who helped them to save and build collectively. This is my last slide. I just wanted to show you the kind of work I'm doing with my research group at the TU Delft. We are called CoLab Research, and we do a number of projects, one to do with uh, looking at comparative international research, another one trying to integrate refugees in the city of Amsterdam through collaborative housing. We are also trying to map and quantify this, this type of housing, uh, especially in Europe, but also abroad, to show their significance. And last but not least, I'm working, teaching uh, and supervising PhD students and new professionals, because I think that's the next generation that needs to learn a new way of thinking about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Спасибо uh, большое. Thank you very much. Well, here in Russia, we have an extensive experience in the field of collaborative housing. This is the so-called shared houses, self-shaped houses. We will talk about that definitely. Now I'd like to pass the floor. I would like to pass the floor to Alexei Sherstov. It has been mul said multiple times that we have a problem with rented houses and the advent of uh, qualified 
rented housing show is expected could could to come in very much in line with uh, foreign markets. Please uh, give us an overview of the rented housing market. Thank you in the first place for the opportunity to be a speaker today. Let me show our extensive expertise matured over the years and put in practice here in Russia. At present, our estimates, according to the old Russia state uh, poll, pollster, the 5.7 million households uh, are living in rented housing. Please keep your mic closer to your mouth. Thank you. And about 6 million uh, families are currently living in rented housing. This amounts to about 10% of the housing assets. Uh, as you can clearly see, the data shows that over 97% of landlords, they are individuals who do not have an official contract with the renters. Usually they, uh, these are shown to uh, contracts not registered with the state. So there is no economic benefit for the state so this is the so-called gray market. And we consider that this market has a great potential in the future. About 5 million families might become potentially a category of the population who would like to improve their living conditions through rented housing. As a result, we came up with the following idea, promoting the standards of rented housing. This is a very good idea especially today, taking into account that rented housing has a long history in Moscow. The first rented household housing emerged in late 18th century, and in mid-20th century they actively developed. So by 1917, up to 40% of residential housing of Moscow was accounted for by the so-called uh, rented housings. The landlords, they attracted famous people, celebrities, all that ensured the success of rented housings. And uh, many city dwellers lived in rented apartments and houses. Respectively, the experience we currently have and the project implemented uh, Right now, at the moment, in July 2017, we launched the first pro pilot project at Hadinska Pole, based on the liner residential complex. We purchased uh, about 280 units, apartment units. We launched the project in July. By September, it was completely full. So this is a great success. That's huge success. It came quite unexpectedly. Moreover, starting from September, we have a waiting list of about 100, 150 tenants who are willing to move in right away. That all helps us keep our tenant rate at about 100%. What are the guiding principles? we stuck to and will continue to use in the future. Our specialists, they developed the principles for rented housing. These uh, are based on main parameters. We believe that we can have this efficient planning schemes. We tried to find the best solutions as part of the residential block, we came up with some layout solutions and we're trying to implement them within the project we're working on. We are paying a great deal of attention to beautification of our housing facilities. People renting apartments, they care so much about the infrastructure, about the location, about the accessibility features, yeah, and uh, their lifestyle should may be made easy. Thus, the main uh, field of attention lies here, and not in the number of square meters they are renting. We also embraced technical advances. We wrote 
a mobile application helping us to give our tenants direct access via their smartphone. And we can see a in monthly increase in turnovers with the use of such mobile systems. Apart from that, let me show you some real-life pictures of our layout solutions. This is the entrance. As you can clearly see, bright tones are predominant. These are the so-called standards of accessible housing. We have tall windows, and it the surface is flat, so there are no stairs. This is a great advantage for the disabled. People, we have around the clock 24-7 concierge service, helping our tenants to get access to all the facilities, be that food deliveries, cleaning services, and other services like garment cleaning, dry cleaning services, and so on and so forth. We have a lot of bright colors. We ensure uh, safety, security, and, and good impression. These are the elevator uh, holes. Does it somehow differ from the apartments you can purchase? Uh, this is a distinguished feature of rented housing, a good lift holes, quality materials. Well, we support all the good initiatives. What is the specificity? What is the peculiarity of such a project? Uh, we all working for the common cause. And in previously, the culture of rented housing was a completely different one. We would like to stick to the best practices, to the highest standards. We have embedded these standards in our projects. And the success I mentioned before in terms of the number of interested potential tenants, it all uh, corroborates the fact that we're moving in the right direction. Because we're giving people the possibility to live in rented housing in conditions previously inaccessible in any rented facility. You all faced that situation, I believe, when you wanted to uh, rent a flat here in Moscow. And and it's quite a painful story full of tears. Uh, what is the ROI? The ROI ranges from 7 to 11 percent annually. There are two main components, the operational profits from the rent and a price change derived profit. Uh, what about the pure profit from the rental? Uh, if we talk about the rate of capitalization in classical uh, scheme, uh, so it would be closer to 5%, right? Yeah, it differs uh, depending on the object, but this number varies varies in uh, the framework of 5%, like that. So that's why those solutions which are uh, represented as one room apartment uh, and also one room apartment with the larger space and two room apartments uh, with some kind of a uh, adding of some uh, multifunctional facilities like the bedroom and etc. And then uh, we have three room apartment and uh, the biggest, the largest apartment of 84 square meters. So here we have even larger space and several words about uh, inner house, uh, like a yard territory, uh, those solutions which we implement. It's the yard without any accessibility on the private transport, uh, which allows you to uh, uh, let your kids walk and have fun there inside. And uh, all these playgrounds which are located inside the yard and several uh, prospective projects which are being implemented on the territory of the Innovative Center Skolkova, then on Chassé Enthusiast of uh, Zlatorovsky Val in Match Point on Kutuzovsky Prospect. That's why we consider that by 20, 
20, we will uh, commission those objects. And in terms of the uh, renters of uh, match point, we have some kind of a uh, direct contact and result. So that's why I guess that the uh, effect of those projects will be similar to liner. I have another question. If we talk about profitability, profitability of 5% with the credit rate of uh, how much now? 10%, right? Uh, yeah, we talk that in the future, in the close future, it will be 7 plus uh, percent. It will be like a mortgage percent rate. So it would be like 9.5, 9.7. But for you to have a payback, correct payback, you have to get some kind of a commercial mortgage. If you would like uh, to find out how it funds, so we uh, uh, launched uh, investment fund. And uh, by the means of this fund, we sell it to the investors which want to invest in the market of the of housing. Oh, now, now I guess I, I understood. Thank you. Yeah, it's rather interesting. Thank you very much. And uh, this very interesting uh, examples of civilized housing of commercial format. And I would like to give a floor to Dmitry Svetov. Uh, so right now we've listened to uh, about we've listened to the speech about rental housing. So can you distinguish the difference between the uh, owner and uh, renting, uh, owning and renting space? So, colleagues, good day. Uh, yeah, please closer, closer the mic. Yeah, to the mouth, please. So, I would like to introduce a short research uh, of the uh, uh, purchasing ability of young generation uh, for those people uh, who uh, want to buy apartment for the first time. And uh, so the company 101 is one of the major developers in Moscow. So we implement large scale uh, projects on the territory of 50 hectares. And the volume of our uh, uh, deals is about 70, 70 units. So we've made the uh, survey of the population and we were asking people when they visit our office. So in uh, the end, whether they bought the uh, uh, apartment or not. So because we had different people from different regions of Russia, so uh, we're trying to follow all Russian trends of demand and offer. Because uh, the buy of the apartment is one of the uh, most important things of the uh, men in Russia. Uh, so that's why people are, are under stress, under stress uh, during this process. And what's the difference of the buyer and renter? Uh, so the difference uh, that the buyer uh, is aimed uh, to leave uh, a rental apartment and purchase his own. So that's why you have uh, the people who already lived in the apartment, so and then they have pretty uh, high standards. And of course, uh, what Dom RF does uh, when uh, the housing is being rented and you have this uh, attitude towards the apartment as to the rented uh, housing when uh, corridors are broken and in bad shape and etc. But if we go back to our target audience, to the youth which buys now the apartments or rent them, Probably uh, you will see it in the slides, uh, main numbers, how the target audience differ. So young uh, generation, uh, which can buy more or less uh, people around 30 year old. 
So those people like 30 plus, uh, so if you talk about uh, uh, more adult people, so uh, they, so you, you are saying that people of uh, like elderly age, they have a better ability to buy than uh, people around 30. Yeah, that's true. So, but here you talk only about those people who visit your office, your survey, right? So, uh, those people who buy apartments uh, in the cities, uh, so that's why uh, motives of the purchase of apartments very often it's the wish to transfer to your own apartment from the rented one and uh, to get Moscow registration for more age-related people. Uh, so it's about 20 million is the volume of, of the surveyed population. And so uh, for uh, agely, uh, peop for adults, they would like to have more convenient apartments. And if we uh, take a young generation, so they consider apartments uh, with the ability to hold one person there. And for um, more age-specific people, uh, they uh, want to have apartment for bigger families, so that's why Oh, we can see that young generation has more uh, family-oriented uh, principle. So uh, first uh, deposit is about 1.5 million rubles. So it's about 36% from the cost of the apartment. And then young generation uh, is ready to buy uh, apartment uh, more often on the stage of the uh, construction of foundation of the house. So that's why mostly we work with young generation on the mortgage. So this group is really interested to us because uh, those people who doesn't have savings don't have savings, but uh, their aim is to transfer to their own apartment housing. Uh, there is this opinion that young people are pretty open to everything new, and they like to improve their convenience and comfort. But in the uh, matter of selection of the uh, housing, they're more conservative than age-related people. For example, if we uh, say about formats for like Euro planning of the apartment, some kind of a, a closets and etc. So, uh, uh, so what are saying that young generation they want the classic apartment of Soviet time like that. So probably there are novices in this market, but for young people, uh, this fact is more significant which is uh, reputation of the developer and uh, well-being and uh, design of infrastructure. And for age-related people, uh, environment, ecology, uh, facades, beauty, presence of balconies are important. So for young people, uh, security of the purchase and functional uh, infillment of the house and uh, furthermore, uh, uh, inhibitation there with the family, but then external fine-tuning. So it's better to uh, uh, spend more money for well-being than to facades. So another indicator, uh, one time, one and a half times more often is the uh, reference, uh, significance of the reference of the acquaintance. When one bar is uh, picking, is dragging uh, his friends, so uh, what you're saying that uh, those people are buying more than uh, 30 year old, then they buy apartments uh, by the word of mouth. So it's some kind of a sensational statement, and it's really mind blowing. 
Yeah, we were really surprised, to be honest. Uh, but my hypothesis in this regard that they haven't uh, so-called smelled the market. So they saw their uh, apartments of their uh, parents. So that's why uh, first earn money in their life they, uh, well, they relate, they uh, have this attitude of con conservative attitude towards this uh, money. So it's like a dream of mar marketing specialists, right? So that's why uh, the uh, aim of the, like when they s talk about uh, entry without steps, uh, like healthy windows, they don't care about that. Uh, as if uh, those people come to us and they don't know about that. We try to promote all these features. Uh, don't tell them about this at all. Probably it's not needed. And what we suppose that the market will force to change the redistribution of the budget. So all the budgets will be spent uh, more for improvements, like uh, yard improvement, not only yard improvement, but also like public spaces. And uh, more uh, funding will be spent for social infrastructure. When kindergarten and school, it's like uh, fulfillment of like regulations and norms, but in the future it will be the less competitive advantage uh, which was not used by developers. So it will be more important to create uh, this very developing uh, media for uh, studying, for teaching kids. So every ruble which is invested in the improvement of the territory, for how much it will increase the cost of the housing. Uh, how much uh, this very ruble will bring you. So most probably you've got this calculation. So w will it be more than one ruble? Yeah, more than that. Yeah, improvement. If improvements are done with the uh, uh, smart approach, so then, yeah, 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 I understand. Thank you very much. So you see, we heard uh, several uh, extremely interesting thesis and Peter, can you comment on them? Because today we heard this one story about people who rent apartments, housing. So those people are pretty progressive. They would like the best things and then the bars of housing and uh, younger people who are becoming more conservative and like more old school people. So I'm uh, Peter Shura. I'm representing uh, Bosch company and uh, we are representing uh, developing of the ho of housing, and we've got three projects in Moscow, and uh, three uh, projects in Moscow, and one in Pereslav Zaleski region. So, if we speak about young generation, which was mentioned in the previous speech, our uh, target audience, I w wouldn't say that it's youth, but it's like single or solo people without kids yet. Because before that very moment, many functions in the apartment are not needed for them in the private use. They don't need, for example, large kitchen, large uh, uh, kids room. Uh, they need little bedroom, uh, little dining room, little uh, bathroom, and uh, they're ready to share other facilities. For example, in the apartments which are pretty uh, uh, common for New York or other uh, cities, they have common facilities like play, uh, ground room, co-working group, uh, common kitchen. So you can share those things not only with the residents of this very house, but also with other people who live in the region, in the district of that house. And so uh, the value of this co-living, uh, like city co-living, it will be in Hamovniki district. The average cost of the square meter in the new housing is about uh, 100,000 rubles. Uh, and so the average uh, space of co-living will be 25 square meters, so it will be about 15 million for one unit. 
So, and in this regard, they're not buying only uh, one uh, co-living, but they will have uh, good shared infrastructures with the uh, dining room, with the uh, uh, bedroom. So, in the end, they're buying the apartment uh, with a space of 75 square meters, if you would consider shared facilities. Uh, also, as for our country, Kolibin, if we take a two-room house, so inside our community will be 5 million rubles, and outside our community, uh, it will be about 15 million rubles. So, that's why we are promoting that very project, uh, product, which is about twice or thrice as less as the similar offers. Uh, just recently, we were doing some surveys on co-working, co-workings, and we found out that it was the same story when uh, they rented co-working about four square meters, but the rent. Let's see. Gets uh, like uh, 10 or 15 square meters. So here you talk about the purchase, not about the rent of the co living, right? Yeah, what's the difference of our co living that we sell them, unlike Western ones? So that's why we speak here about some kind of a social status. It doesn't matter uh, that uh, those tenants in co living are without kids. Yeah, here. Uh, it uh, relates to the city uh, tenants, but as for country uh, tenants, uh, they could have one kid or just get newborn kid. And for example, if a person moves to another area, so he can be substituted, but if people buy uh, those co-livings, uh, will you have any turbulations? Uh, between the residents of those communities. You see, we have the whole group of psychologists who try to minimize this risk. But to respond to a question, we'll find it out only by our experience. So, uh, but you predict those issues, right? You see, we have very interesting expert, Ilya Utikhin, even me, even I know him. And together with Ilya, we're trying to build up this mechanism how to deal with those people. Uh, yeah, Ilya was uh, very famous for his diploma, uh, which was devoted to communal apartments. Thank you. Thank you very much. And right now, I would ask uh, our friend to talk about uh, innovative ideas and new products, whether we have new products. My name is Marko Michic Yevtic. I'm the uh, head of the group of the products of Peak Group. So we will talk about millennials, about sharing, about Peak. How to operate this machine? Can you press blank? So I'm a millennial. So I was not going uh, through all the surveys. I was born in 1990, and for 18 years I uh, was living to get the apartments, to become an owner of the, uh, of the car. So when I grown up, I thought that I would get this. But today, as of now, I don't have a car, and I'm pretty happy. I don't think it's a smart expense. But it's not real truth, because uh, I own about 20,000 cars in Moscow. Today I can drive smart, then tomorrow Mercedes, and etc. So for the whole uh, my life, I live in the rental housing with my parents. Uh, so it gives you pretty good flexibility. Uh, so when I went uh, to school, to institute, we moved to another bigger apartment, then to bigger apartment. It was pretty convenient. So what's our goal of millennials? Not the goal of those people who buy apartment, but for us, we want to live where we work, where uh, our industry is on the edge. So it means that we want to travel, want to change our locations. We want 
to uh, consume at the same time both mark, mark, mass, mass market and luxury brands. So uh, you can have prestige and status. Uh, we want to live today, but not tomorrow. And uh, we would like to be not just a family, but the part of the so uh, social community, so too. Uh, 200 years ago, it was OK to own a person. So kind of it was my slave, and I bought him. But today, it's kind of normal to own things. Uh, but I guess that in uh, 100, 200 years, uh, this first thing, uh, the second thing uh, will be uh, like barbarian, will have barbarian approach the same way as the first one. So shared and private, what's the difference? Why do I want to answer this question? Because this is the question about how to project and design houses as of today. What kind of my concept in relationship to that? So it's a house in California. It's a private one or shared, like communal. It's communal. It's shared one. Uh, and here is the apartment of my friend Harry, architect in New York. Is it private or shared? It's private one. However, he rents it. And this very house is in California as well. Is it shared or private? What's the difference of those? between those apart. Is this car shared or private? Uh, there is no difference uh, from shared, but it's private. So the main feature of communal or shared uh, things as of today, uh, that it has no difference in relationship to the private one. It could be the same or even better. So today, we are trying to uh, go from the public transportation, public transport to the private one. So my hypothesis is that the only thing which is different from shared and private today is smart lock or lock. Smart lock of uh, ignition in the cars, of the uh, uh, doors, from the doors of the apartments. So the only thing uh, which differs uh, I mean, uh, for the, for a difference for the shared apartments that we don't have keys, we have smart locks, and I have a special uh, chart, uh, hyper coupe. So uh, in the bottom you can see concrete system. So uh, in this very area you have all power electric systems. So it means that from hyper coupe. Uh, all the uh, digital electronics uh, devices will be taken out. So you have to project to design uh, the houses uh, with the glance to the bottom uh, sector. So my theory, what's the difference between shared and private? It's almost no difference at all. So what we design now, it will stay with us for ages. And the model of use will be uh, different altogether. So uh, many houses which were built as the uh, uh, so-called rental profitable house, now they are owned by someone. So the consumption is being changed as of today so quick that we can't respond to the uh, demand. What? we do what do we do actually in peak what's our approach to housing so uh yeah the construction phase is pretty slow but uh it's almost impossible to do something out of the current demands only so that's why this very famous phrase uh, so you have to aim to uh, this very place w which is not reached by anyone. So what's our approach to the uh, view of the market? We have pretty uh, large team of professionals and experts inside of our company and uh, people from different social layers. So it's not only me, people with families with different level of education. We have uh, metal workers, IT guys, uh, engineers, electricians, and etc. Buffett. This is the story of Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. This is uh, it's difficult to come by, but you can get it in a software version. This is a Ford Edsel 1959. It's believed the to be the to be the worst failure of the automotive 
industry. It was a result of an in-depth study of the public opinion. Why do people purchase Cadillacs? Why do people purchase Chevys? It took dozens and dozens of interviews with end customers. No one had the wish to purchase such a car. Starting from 20. 15, when we launched Peak Standard, I wasn't aboard back then. Everyone believed we were crazy at Peak, but this is when I wanted to join the company. We introduced Peak Standard. This is about the beautification, about the uh, finishing materials, and this is by now a standard in the market. What did we do back then? We came up with a hypothesis. Others would say they don't want it. Why do you purchase? apartments from Peak because they believed Peak is reliable. We made a survey. Why do owners like their apartments? Actually, virtually everything they were not willing to pay for, this is what they like now. So this having the yard planning, having the finishing touches, large windows. No one could actually tell what large windows were before. Layouts. Layouts vary. This is why customers purchase such apartments right now. Other, there are plenty of copycats today, and we're happy that others are copy-pasting our solutions. And this turns us back to rented housing. We took a decision to go 100% finished apartments. And back in 2016, it was only the beginning. Now, no other developers offered such a service. And this year, we're going to have 1.5 million. So our goal is to have 2 million square meters in Russia. We set very ambitious goals. This is the statistics of the supply and demand sides in Moscow, 2014-2017. The P group is building 75% of finished apartments. So this is about our trend. We are in front of the market trends. We are the pioneers. So actually, your 75% of finished apartments accounts for this 25% total. We are doing the right thing the right way. And this is one of the final slides. I would like to point out the following. The only thing that prevents us from having a high quality rented apartment markets, these are the high rates. Please keep the previous slide. So this is a finished apartment. When we have 100% coverage of finished apartments, this is what DOM.RF is trying to do. This is the first step towards shared living. You will, once you have purchased apartments, you will be able to let it from day one, right away, right after the purchase. You can join an investment fund, purchase 50 apartments in various locations, and rent them out. We're not going to cover other plans we have. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, distinguished speakers. I deal in commercial real estate. Why do I love residential real estate? Every time you attend the conference, you have this uh, vision, and companies seem to be living in completely different worlds. You live one world, Pickley in lives another word, word, Dom RF, it's a completely different target audience. And that's great, that, that's lovely. Because this is something that gives our lives diversity. Thank you so much, distinguished colleagues. Despite the heat, I hope you will still enjoy your business day at the Moscow Urban Forum 2018. Thank you.